Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good midday. Depends on whatever you're watching this. God bless you guys. Hey, welcome to our Bible study. As we are looking at the people that followed Jesus, specifically the 12 disciples, we'll add a couple along our journey, but specifically the 12 disciples. Today, we're going to kind of try to pick up the pace a little bit. We've already looked at Simon Peter. That took us a few weeks to get through that. We looked at the three Jameses. Do you remember that? James the Just, Big James, Little James. Remember those three? Okay, we kind of covered all that. We looked uh, last time at the, uh, the Apostle John, if you remember that. Today, let's kind of pick up the pace. Let's run together and let's get, we'll talk about Andrew and Philip, two friends. All these guys were friends, but these two seem to be serving a lot together. So we'll put them together and we'll put it, we'll put a couple others together as we, we finish up this, the, the, who are the 12 disciples? Who are the ones that are following Jesus? And then we'll even add a little bit more before we're done. Let's go to prayer. If you have a Bible and you should turn over to the Gospel of John chapter 1, I'll take you over there in just a minute. Father, we love you a lot and we trust in you. Father, I pray that you would open your word to us, help us to hear your voice. Lord, how we love you, how we need to hear your voice today. Lord, teach us through your word, teach us. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen and amen. Well, praise the Lord. All right, so boom, let's, let's talk about Andrew. Uh, Andrew. Now, when you think of Andrew in the Bible, now his name is pretty cool because his name means manly, manly. Him and his brother were some of the very first to follow Jesus. Andrew is whose brother? Okay. Think about that. Andrew, because you always read it this way. If you're familiar with the Gospels, you cannot think about Andrew without it being Simon Peter's brother because it's always like that. How, and you don't see Andrew throwing a fit over this. Hey, I got my own person, you know, instead of being um, uh, Simon's brother, Peter's brother. But the thing is this, is they both followed Jesus at the same time. They both began to follow Jesus. And I had you go over to John chapter one. Uh, let's just read down through this, verse 35. John chapter one, verse 35, speaking of Andrew. It says the next day, John, speaking of John the Baptist, John was standing with two. Hold on, let me make a get my I got a messy desk today. All right, that's better. Uh, the next day, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, Behold the Lamb of God. Okay. So here you have some disciples of John the Baptist. All right. We're gonna see Andrew's one of them. John's another one of them, as we'll see here in a minute. And as Jesus walks by, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. The very one that we've talked about all of our lives. The whole thing the Old Testament's about is the sacrifice of the Lamb. There's the Lamb. There'll be sacrifice for us. Behold the Lamb of God. Now, two of the disciples, is all it says there, verse 37, uh, heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. So they went running after him. Jesus turned and saw them following him, said to them, what are you seeking? What are you looking for? You know, here comes these two guys running up to him. He, Jesus turns around and goes, hey, what's up? What are you looking for? And they said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Probably didn't know what to say. Uh, 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 where, where, where are you staying? You know, what hotel are you in? They didn't have hotels back then. But where are you staying? He said, come and see. Oh, listen. That does not stop today. Come and see. And then after you see, see that the Lord is good, go and tell. Come and see, he says, come and see. And so they came and saw where he was staying and they, and they stayed with him that day. And it was about the 10th hour. Uh, one of the two who heard John speak and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He was found, uh, then he went and found Simon, his brother, said to him, we have found the Messiah, which means Christ. He brought him to Jesus and Jesus looked at him and we looked at this last time, uh, well, several times back when we were talking about Simon Peter. Uh, Jesus looked at Peter and said, you're Simon, the son of John, but I'm gonna call you Cephas, Aramaic for, for Peter, which means Peter. All right, so you have the first kind of introduction of Andrew to Jesus, Andrew, goes right away and tells his brother. All right, you're going to see this. You're going to see this pretty, 
typical of Andrew. I'm going to come back to that, his little characteristics. One of the things I want you to see is we is the next story, and let me just lump these two together. It says in verse 43, the next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found who? Philip. Andrew and Philip is who we're looking at today. Philip. Um, and, and he said to him, he says, hey, Philip, come follow me. Okay, he found Philip. The word found there means that he sought him out. God seeks us out. And he sought out Philip. Philip, Greek name, Philip, it's the name of the, it's, it's uh, let's see, Alexander the Great's dad's name. All right, it means, Philip means a lover of horses, okay? So uh, a very Greek name. I'll come back to that, all right? A lot of these little little things, I, I know, okay, I'm going to come back to that and I put it on the shelf. I just got to remember to go back to the shelf and get them because that's going to take a second. I want to talk about that. Him being Greek, but I'm not on Philip right now. I just want, I don't want to get, I don't want to turn the page without reading the story. All right, so you have Philip, you have Andrew being called to Jesus. Now, Philip was from, oh, we're going to have to stop for a second. Uh, let me read it and I'll come back to this. Was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and, and Peter. They're all from Bethsaida. Okay, keep that in mind. They will move later on to Capernaum, which is right there by that. It's the next city down. Um, towards the you know, next city over, I should say, on the, the shores of the Sea of Galilee. They'll move over there because that's where Simon Peter's mom lives. His mother-in-law lives. They're going to stay with him. All right, stay, stay tuned. Hold on. I'm going to put that on the shelf too. All right. City of Andrew and Peter. Philip, was found, Philip found Nathaniel and said to him, we have found uh, him whom Moses said the law, also the prophets wrote, uh, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph, uh, Nathaniel said, anything come, good can come out of Nazareth. Philip said to him, look, come and see, come and see, come and see. That's our call is to come and see. So you have Philip there, the call of Philip. Now I'll leave that alone. So I want to come back to Philip in a minute. And so here's what we learned so far in our few minutes, just, you know, seconds together is Andrew and Philip and, and Simon and Peter are, are all from initially from Bethsaida, right? They felt that how they how they began to follow Jesus was here. They were followers of John the Baptist. Andrew was, and John was. Uh, they're followers of John the Baptist, and uh, and then uh, and then John said, "Hey, go follow him. He's the he's the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world." All right, they're both from they're both from Bethsaida. Let's do this. Uh, let me go over to my PowerPoint. I love PowerPoint. All right. So I want to show you, and I know some of you guys have been saying how small it is. I don't know how to make this any bigger on these screens. I love teaching at church because I got a big screen behind me, and I've got you know the, the the other screens on the side. So hopefully you can just kind of squint at some of these. All right. And so here you have the Sea of Galilee, freshwater uh, lake. I, I pray that most of you've been with me long enough. You know some of the geography of this place. All right. So you have Capernaum. Notice where I'm swirling right there. See Capernaum. Chorazin and Bethsaida. Okay, Bethsaida, Beth, house of, house of the fishermen. Um, okay, so this is the normal map that you're going to see. Okay, so what we're looking at here is we're looking at a place called Et Tel. Et Tel, right? This is this right here, found in, in 19, uh, 1987, it was found. And when you go to Israel, okay, not with me, by the way, if you if you went with me several years ago, maybe I took you over here because I hadn't done the research yet. But you won't go, I won't take you there now, and I'll, show, I'll tell you why in a minute. But you have this sign there, it's for tourists, Bethsaida, the House of Fishermen, you've got this Canaanite idol that's there, uh, it's where the fishermen lived and all of that. Uh, big problem with this place, though. All right, so they take you through there. You can notice the Canaanite idol right there. And this was a little temple that they had uh, there. This was the Holy of Holy of that Canaanite temple that was there. Uh, here's the problem we have, and they'll take you by there. The house of the fishermen, all of this. I want you to look at, I'm, st I'm standing on the tell right here. I'm looking at the Sea of Galilee. Okay, we've got some problems here. First problem is, all right, here's the first, there's, there's several problems that we have of this site. Number one problem is this site is the wrong date. 
This saw this site was destroyed. Listen to this in 732 BC. BC. 732 BC, the Assyrian king uh Tiglag Pileser the third, right? That that if you know a little bit of Old Testament history, you know that name. Uh, Tiglag Pileser the third going on a campaign against the Galilee area, destroyed that town, and it was never it was never built up again. All right, so it's the wrong date. Okay, oh, but how do you know that, Pastor? Maybe they resettled it and all that. This right here is a complete deal killer. Now, I don't want to burst your bubble if you keep going there to, to Israel tours and you've been to this place and say, well, this is the this is Bethsaida where, where you know these guys were all from. No, here's the problem. Let me go back over to this picture again. Here's the problem. You're standing up on this tail. This is the Sea of Galilee. What they will tell you is that an earthquake changed the changed the shoreline. It used to be this was all the Sea of Galilee. See this plain out here. Big problem with this. Out in this plain, there's two known tells. There's two known ancient cities from the time of Jesus. So in these tells that are out here, these would have been underwater in the time of Jesus. It does not work geographically. All right, this is not. I can tell. You, I can say this definitively. I can say this. I can say this with with just about every archaeologist in Israel today, except the one that's that's, that's put his name on this site. Almost every archaeologist will tell you zero chance that that's Bethsaida. All right. Why do you make such a big deal out of this, Pastor? I make a big deal out of this. I love archaeology. I love geography of the Bible. You hang around me any length of time, I'm going to teach you the geography of the Bible. You can go online, one of my favorite series that I do, and I do it about every three or four years. I'll do a, it's about 30 hours, where I will teach you the geography of the Bible. All right? It's called a virtual Israel tour. All right? I just finished this probably two years ago. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe two years ago, a year and a half ago. Uh, it's all online right now. You can see all the PowerPoints and all that. And by the way, that's like a lot of my stuff. All those PowerPoints are online for you. All the notes are online. You do take that for your own studies and, and borrow that. Borrow it, take it, okay? Um, okay, so there you go. So they're from Bethsaida. Oh, let me show you this before I quit on this. Uh, I gotta go back to here. Is that, so do we know what Bethsaida is? Yes, we do. We probably do. There's a couple of prime candidates for Bethsaida. But the Julia, which is, which is a tell right here, and when I do the, the virtual Israel tour, I spend a little bit more time on this. Uh, this this Bethsaida, this is this is probably where Bethsaida is. By the way, uh, the other tell, there's nothing ever excavated from the time period of Jesus, not excavated anything that says Bethsaida on it. It doesn't work, period. All right, so that there is a tell that does work, all right? And we've talked about in the past about going over there and doing excavations there. I talked to some of the locals there about doing excavations. Uh, that was a dream. I'm old and fat now. I don't want to go over there and dig in the dirt now, okay? But when I was younger, that was a hot spot that I wanted to do a dig on. All right, anyways. So Andrew, Philip, and then and then uh, Simon Peter are all from Bethsaida. Where's that town at today? We don't know. It's probably, it's probably Julia, all right? It's probably that town that hasn't been excavated. But if you go to Israel, just humor them, smile at them, just, but just know better that that tell that they're showing you, and there's a couple places like that, that there, there's no way, no way. Oh, if you hang out with me on the virtual Israel tour, I'm going to crush your bubble in a big way. If you think the garden tomb in, in Jerusalem that you go and take communion See the see the the tomb. You walk in there. The tomb is empty. He's not there. If you think that is the tomb of Jesus, you are sorely mistaken. Zero chance that that's the the tomb of Jesus. How can you say that, Pastor? I can say that definitively. That is definitely not. It doesn't fit the scriptures. It doesn't fit the geography. It doesn't. It's not. Eat what you're looking at is not even the right. It's not even real. That tomb has been made up to look like it does, all right? It's it's a complete fabrication of what the tomb is like. I've been in that tomb. I've been behind that tomb and down underneath behind that tomb, all right? I know exactly what's there, all right? Because been there, done that. Been with the archaeologists there, all right? So 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 that so there. 
Now, how do you like me? All right, you that have been to Israel. Well, you know, Pastor, I actually did a wedding there. All right, I got married there at the Garden Tomb, and you're telling me that's not the resurrection place of Jesus? Oh, I'm so sorry. No, it's not. All right, so uh, here's the thing. Here's what I'm about, all right? I just want to let you know, and this really helps for Wednesday night study when I'm going through the book of Revelation. I just want to know what the Bible says, and I, I want to know it's true. All right, if it's true, then let's look at it. I don't care about tradition. Tradition, tradition. Who cares about, I don't care about tradition. I do care about what does the Bible say, and I will look at tradition. Does tradition line up with the Bible? All right, I got to go back to our study. I, I've got like, I've got like 10 minutes to, to finish this up, and there's still a lot to cover. All right, so Andrew, Simon Peter's brother from Bethsaida, not the one they take you to, from Bethsaida, Philip also from that, Philip, a follower of Jesus. We saw where he began to follow Jesus, and his name means lover of horses. I don't know if that has anything to do with anything, but he does. He is Greek. That has something to do with something. I'll get with it in just a minute. All right, so... Okay, so I'm done with that. All right, so uh, so here, um, Andrew meets he meets Jesus. All right, where are you staying? Come and see. Come and see. Turn over to Matthew chapter four now. So they go see. They hang out with Jesus for a little bit. Go back fishing again. All right. We, we're talking about some time now lapse. And uh, when I did the uh, and I should have wrote took some better notes for this. Is that when I did the uh, virtual Israel tour, I put all this in in, uh, in on a timeline. All right, so I'm thinking it's like six months to a year. This event now happens, all right? So notice what happens here. And you, you can correct me. Go over my notes when, when I taught Matthew chapter four, and that's where you need to go and, and see the timeline right there. All right, so so later on, let's just say later on, okay, Andrew knows Jesus is, is, is Messiah. He goes back, he's fishing in verse 18. Now, walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers speaking of Jesus. Simon, who's called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting nets into the sea for their fishermen. And, and then he said to them, follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. Notice the word, verse 20. Immediately, they left their nets and followed him. And going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James and John, uh, the sons of Zebedee, and they followed him. And the, it's the calling of the disciples as they begin to follow him. So here you have Jesus just going to, to Andrew and, 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 and Peter, come on, come follow me. And they immediately, there's a little history already. I showed you some little history already in this. They're already starting to, they've already been meditating on who this guy is. It's not the first time they saw him. All right, immediately they left their nets and began to follow him as disciples. Okay, he's the rabbi. They are, he, they are the students of the rabbi, All right? Um, all right, then we see then we see Andrew again in action and Philip in action. Uh, go over to John chapter six, really quick. Flip over to John chapter six. All right, John chapter six. You'll recognize it right away. It's the feeding of the five thousand. Here you see two of these guys in action. Okay, uh, verse one. After this, Jesus went uh, went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, in a large crowd was following him because they saw the signs that, that he was doing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain and there he sat down with his disciples. All right, there is a place. Now that is a good place that I take you to where the feeding of the multitude took place. All right. It's just down just a little bit from the Mount of Beatitudes. There's a place there that fits this story. Uh, now the pastor, the, the feast of the, the Jews was at hand, lifting up his eyes then, and seeing a large crowd coming towards him, he said to Philip, the lover of horse dude, all right? The Greek, the Greek dude. He said, Philip, where are we going to find bread, you know? Where are we going to find bread so that these people may eat? He said this to test him, for he knew himself what he was going to do. He knew what he was going to do. Hey, Philip, see all these people? Philip, hey, you, Philip. Hey, Philip, see all these people? Let's feed them. How are you going to feed them? You already knew what he was going to do. Philip shakes his head and he goes, Lord. 200 denarii worth of bread. 200 denarii, about eight months wages. Think about how much you make in eight months before you got, you know, uh, furloughed, right? Think about how much you made in eight months. If I had that money right there, eight months worth of salary, I couldn't buy enough bread to feed these people that they'd just have a little piece of it. That's not going to work. Uh, then in the middle of this, notice Andrew shows up, Simon Peter's brother. He said to him, hey, I got this kid over here. 
He has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they? What are they about with so many? Oh, you have little faith. And he said, okay, all right, all right. Have the people sit down. Five loaves, two fish. Andrew went and got this kid, this kid. Now, it's funny. I've heard so many people teach on this. And, uh, you know, here's this kid crying. He's got my lunch. Okay. Um, I don't know that. I think the kid gave it up, you know. Uh, his mom gave him some a lunch for the day. He said, I got this kid's lunch over here. Shut up, kid. This is this is the Messiah. All right. I got this kid's lunch, but this ain't enough to feed the whole people. But Jesus, me and you can have a little snack right now. All right. So, um, no, I don't think that's what I think that kid. I think that kid was blessed to give it to Jesus. Here's the thing. I get to meet Jesus face to face. And here's my lunch. Think about this. The little bit that we have in the hands of God becomes great. The little bit that you are in the hands of God becomes great. The little bit that we have, Lord, I, all I have, I don't have much. All that I have is yours. And I put it in your hands. And what happens? You know the story. He feeds the multitude. He feeds the multitude. It's Andrew that is the one that brings his brother. He brings um, he, he brings uh, uh, this kid to Jesus. Andrew uh, is the one that's the go-to person if you want to bring somebody to Jesus. I'll tell you another story in a minute where Andrew is the go-to person. Uh, this is like so, so important that, that when the Billy Graham crusade was out doing their, when Billy Graham was alive, and, uh, and you know, boy, I could do an hour on Billy Graham crusades uh, because we were part of the early days uh, of the Billy Graham Crusade, as far as the ones in Sacramento, we were the ones, we were some of the ones, me and my wife were very young, and we were the ones that were, were the ones, that, we were some of the counselors, all right? Okay, woo-woo, okay. Over the years, we got to know Franklin Graham, and my wife works for Franklin now, uh, and with Operator's Christmas Child, and they know each other, and, and all that, blah, blah, blah. All right, so, but here's the thing is this, is that they use Andrew as an example, and they have a program called Operation Andrew. In other words, bring your friends to Jesus. Bring your friends to the crusade that they can hear about Jesus. Operation Andrew. All right. So Andrew is known for bringing people to Jesus. Now, let me tell you what happens after this. Um, let me go over to another slide for you. Is this, I'm going to take you here for just a moment. Uh, here's the thing is that, uh, what happened to Andrew after all of this? All right. I always like when I did this study, I did like in-depth study on the, the lives of the apostles. Uh, one of the things was that um, I, I tracked each of the disciples all the way out to where they ended up. All right. And so that's and, and we take hours looking at that and doing the research of that. With Andrew, uh, there's a couple stories about him. One of them, the, the, the last one is probably true because it's so well told in the early church. Uh, there's a story of Andrew going to, uh, we know he was in Jerusalem when the Apostle Paul, uh, Saul of Tarsus, was wreaking havoc on the church. The apostles were still there. When they begin to st scatter, Istanbul is one of the places, in Turkey, Istanbul is one of the places that claim him. Russia is one of the places that, that claim him. Armenia is a place that claims him. Armenia has probably got a, it's got kind of a cool story uh, with, with that. But the one that's the most interesting and just for our time, and one that we would say, okay, out of all those, maybe he maybe he did get around a lot. Maybe went to Istanbul, Istanbul, went to Russia, back to Istanbul. No, he went to Armenia, Russia, and Istanbul, and then ended up in Greece, all right? Here's the story of what happened in Greece. And this is probably, this, one's, this one goes really back in the early church and probably accurate. All right, so here you have Greece. Here you have, uh, again, you got to squint. I'm sorry. If you have this on big TV, it's better. Uh, here you have Corinth, Athens, okay, from our from our Bible studies, all right? The Corinthian Canal right in here, okay? Do you know about Corinthian Canal? All right, so you have Corinthian Canal. Back, go all the way around, follow the shoreline, all the way to Petraea. Now, this is the place right here. Petraea is a place that, uh, that, that Andrew was ministering at. In fact, what happened was, here, let me look at me again. Hi. Okay, so here's what happened is the governor's wife, the governor of the area was sick, actually terminally sick. And the word went out, not from the governor, not from her husband, but the word went out that there's a healer guy in town, this Andrew guy, and, and he's got some power. So he went over there and he prayed for this governor of this area, Petraea, it was the governor, prayed for his wife and his wife got healed. 
right? Now, this is a good story, and this is probably a pretty accurate story. So his wife got healed. Well, in that, she says, okay, tell me about what you believe. Okay, you follow Jesus. You know Jesus. He rose from the dead and all this. I'll follow Jesus. She became a believer. Her husband, the governor, got really mad at this. But in the process of this, not only did she get saved, the, her husband, the governor, his brother got saved, and his brother's wife got saved. So that, that couple got saved. And so they're all working on the governor to get him saved. He doesn't want no part of it. And so he eventually gets really mad at Andrew for leading his wife to Jesus, not thanking him for he raised her from the dead almost. He was on a deathbed. But uh, so what he did was, he, this is this is one of the things they would do, is they crucify him. But how they crucified these guys is that they would tie him to a cross. They would not nail him. They would tie him to a cross and put him on the put him out there on the on the uh, beach out there because at night wild dogs would come out there and would jump up there and and torment you and rip your rip your body off there and eat you. All right, so it's horrible death. And so Andrew was put on a cross on that beach. Now the way he was crucified. Let me go over here. Um, it was in a cross of an X, again, tied to the stake, tied to this X, okay, uh, St. Saint, Saint Andrew's cross, does that sound familiar? Okay, because that that's, do you find that on coins? Do you find that on flags and all that? St. Andrew's cross, because he is on a cross made out of an X. In fact, you can see it again on, you can see it on various images, okay, various uh, images, this is on a, a song book from the early days from the 14 1500s a song book you see you see him on a cross you see him carrying a cross on some coinage here's some ancient roman coins see that little x right there that is to commemorate uh the the crucifixion of andrew even this do you know what flag that is one of the scottish there's a couple of flags but this is the scottish flag from scotland and you know what this is called St. Andrew's Cross, all right? St. Andrew's Cross is on this. This is also brought over to America and used during the Civil War. The Confederate States use this, this kind of imagery of this cross. Okay, so you have this, you have this cross. Now, so, okay, so here's a story. So, so the governor put him out there on the shoreline on this, on this X cross for him to die on, right? The dogs are going to come and eat you. While he's hanging there, over 2,000 people come out there to hear him preach. He's preaching from the cross. An eyewitness says this, Andrew hung upon the cross three whole days, suffering dreadful pain, uh, but continuing constantly to tell the people around him of the love of Jesus Christ. The people, as they listened to him, uh, began to believe his words and asked the governor to let him, let him be taken down from the cross. Not liking to refuse them, he, at his last orders, the rope were cut, uh, but when the when the last rope was severed, the body of the apostle fell to the ground quite dead. And so, you know, the governor was getting more mad because not only is his his wife and his brother in law and his wife are saved now. There's thousands of people. There's two thousand people who heard him preach. How many of those two thousand got saved? Probably a lot. Now he's got a revival going on. Andrew dies on a cross, preaching to the preaching to the crowds about Jesus. That, that happened on the last day of November of 69 AD, according to history. All right. Okay, so how much are we doing on time? Oh, look at that. I got a minute and 30 seconds. I'm sorry, Philip. Uh, we're going to have to do this pretty quick. All right, so Philip, Andrew, Philip, they were friends. I've already showed you some things about Philip. Lover of horses. It's a Greek name. Why is that important? Here, here's a cool story. This is, I'm not, I won't have time. Go over there and read it later in John chapter uh, 12. Is that uh, Jesus is having all these arguments with the religious leaders. And uh, it's in the middle of this that the Greeks are watching him. All right. He had, he had just, uh, he just turned over the money changers tables on the, on the, Mount, on the, uh, on the, uh, the place of prayer there in the Temple Mount area. And the Greeks are watching this. So the Greeks want to meet Jesus. And so what they do is they go to Andrew, excuse me, they go to Philip, the Greek guy, and say, hey, sir, and I love this, how they say it. In fact, this struck me so much. 
This was on the pulpit at Calvary Chapel for years and years and years. Here's what they said. They said, sir, we wish to see Jesus. That's what they said to Philip. The Greek said to Philip. And I had that on my pulpit for years. In fact, I wish I could turn this screen because it's right there. I can't get, I've already, I screwed this down. I can't let you, I don't know if I can do this without breaking something. I can't do it. I'll break something. It's right, this is my desk at home. All right, so right there, all right? I can't turn this, I'd show it to you. Is that what was on the pulpit? It says, sir, we would see Jesus from John chapter 12 from this story. All right, had that on the pulpit forever. Now I got a metal pulpit and I try to put this on there. It doesn't look, doesn't look right. All right, so, but here's the thing, fill up. So they, so the Greeks came to Philip, John chapter twelve. Philip uh, want to get, want to bring these Greeks to Jesus. He goes to Andrew. Andrew in turn takes him to Jesus. Okay, so Andrew, well, well, Andrew and Philip go together. Hey, 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 Andrew, go with me. Come, come here, Andrew, come with me. These guys want to see Jesus. Come on. A really good scene of this is in the John film. I should have showed you that. In the John film, go watch. It's free online. Go to YouTube. You got to watch the whole thing. It's powerful. And you'll see a great scene of this. Probably the best film adaptation of this is from that film. And you'll see um, you'll see how they played it out. Jesus was in a lot of anguish right there because he's dealing with all this stuff. And all of a sudden, here comes the Greeks. And they come to him. All right, and it's, it's pretty powerful. The Gospel According to John, uh, go on YouTube. The entire thing is free. I watch it all the time. It's one of my favorite. It was my by far my favorite movie of all times until The Chosen came out, and I like that one too. All right, so anything about Jesus. All right, so Philip, Andrew, following Jesus. What happened to Philip? We don't know. Uh we, here's what we do know about Philip and, and where he ended up. Um, you know, I should have done some of the history. Just go on, just go go to uh, the Life of Christ series and, and pull these up. They're better. I do better there because I have more time. Uh, but Philip is, uh, during the persecution of Domitian, uh, which is called the Great Persecution. And if you're with me on Wednesday night, look at the book of Revelation. Some of this stuff I've talked about, about the various persecutions, especially when I dealt with Smyrna. Uh, the letter to the Church of Smyrna in the book of Revelation uh, that's the persecuted church. I give you kind of a quick timeline of, of church history as far as that that timeline of the persecution years. Domitian is one of the uh, one of the emperors right before John. Right, John is uh, is exiled to the island of Patmos through Domitian. Domitian d does what's called the Great Persecution during those years. You know, thousands of people died right there. All right, so Philip is is persecuted right there and dies. How did he die? One story, burned at the stake. Two stories, uh, uh, crucified upside down like his brother. All right, so there's these different stories about what happened. What What is pretty clear that he died during that time period. All right, Philip and Andrew. All right, I got to quit. All right, I went, I went way over today. Thank you for being patient with me. And we'll keep lumping these two together. I'll try to kind of keep keep the pace. But I want to get through these 12 disciples and then get back to the Gospel of Matthew. All right, I got to go. Um, God bless you guys. You can go back over and watch this. This is good stuff in here. I gave you a lot of material today. You are learning the Bible with me. That's our goal. I'm not here to give you the warm fuzzies. That's that's another pastor. Go to go to that pastor. It's going to go make you feel good about yourself. I want you to know this Bible. And that's that's what our goal is, is for us to learn the Bible together, right? So we're doing that. We're doing that. I'm enjoying this. All right, God bless you guys. Go live for Jesus. He loves you a lot. We'll see you next time. Same Same time, same station. God bless you.